What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel, Rack of Lamb. If you're new here, I am Maggie, a mom with a big appetite. If you see my previous videos, you know that I speak fluent Cantonese, and that's because I am Chinese. And guess what? Chinese New Year is right around the corner and you have less than a month to plan the ultimate feast. You don't want to show up to a party empty-handed or as the Chinese would say, So I have three options for you. One, you can head over to my channel to learn how to make ta siu or Chinese barbecue roast pork directly in your air fryer. I'll link it above and in the descriptions below for your convenience. Two, you can continue watching to learn how to make crispy pork belly or choy pei siu yok also in your air fryer. And three, make both. Show up to the party with both hands full. Zhang liu or roast meat is very popular during Lunar New Year and I guarantee they will not disappoint. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon below to be notified of all my future uploads. Make sure you stay till the end of the video if you want to learn how to say some Chinese greetings for Lunar New Year. I bought this large piece of pork belly from my local Asian supermarket recently. There is no cutting allowed so I was stuck with the size which weighed 3.26 pounds. Great for a Chinese New Year gathering but not a family of three. I'm cutting this in two, storing half in the fridge to make crispy pork belly tomorrow and the remainder is going straight into the freezer because there is no way a family of three can finish this entire piece. Early afternoon the next day, I removed the pork belly from the fridge to prepare it for dinner. You want your pork to contain fairly proportional fat and meat when making crispy pork belly. Thin skin with a layer of juicy fat and a good amount of meat. This piece looks pretty decent to me. What do you think? Begin by placing your pork belly into a pot and pouring enough water to fully submerge the pork. Here, I am using 6 cups of water. I also boil my pork with the skin side down. Oops, I meant the other way. Now place 1 teaspoon of salt into the water and bring it to a boil to remove the impurities from the pork. I turned my fire on high heat and it took between 10 to 15 minutes to boil. Once the water bubbles and you see the gunk floating to the surface, turn off the fire, discard the water and give your pork belly a good rinse. Place your pork belly onto a plate and take it to the spa for some pampering. Warning, graphic content ahead. Specifically, hair plucking. So you may get lucky if you come home with a nicely shaven pork belly. If you're unfortunate like me, you may need to pluck some hair either prior or after parboiling. If you have a blowtorch, sure, fire away or just use tweezers like I am. Let me know if you have other tips and if you've tried using nair, wax strips, an epilator or laser hair removal. When the skin is nice and silky smooth, start stabbing the pork belly with a meat tenderizer if you have or a fork if you don't. Metal skewers would work as well. I did count how many times I poked holes into this pork skin and the result was about 100. The more you poke, the better. You want to prick more little holes because they are what causes the signature crackling on Chinese pork belly. However, don't poke it too deep into the skin or until you reach the meat because this will result in bubbling of juices that will cause blotches on the skin. You will begin to see juices coming to the surface. Make sure you blot as much as you can because a dry skin is critical in a crackling crust. To draw out excess liquid, apply some white distilled vinegar onto the skin. 
I poured one teaspoon onto a small plate and started brushing vinegar onto the skin. The entire teaspoon wasn't used as I stopped when I felt the skin was thoroughly covered. How fitting was the plate, by the way? Next, sprinkle one teaspoon of salt and rub it throughout the skin. This also aids in liquid removal. You want your pork skin to be as dry as possible. Rock salt is commonly used because they are easier to remove, but one teaspoon of fine sea salt never failed me and doesn't result in overly salty pork. Now place the pork belly into the fridge uncovered for about 4 hours or up to 12 hours. The air in the refrigerator is dry, so it will help in drying out the skin. I removed the pork belly from the fridge twice and blotted off the juice that rose to the surface. This snippet here makes it very clear that the vinegar and salt are very effective in drawing out liquid. I blotted the skin the second time, then threw it back into the fridge. When it came time to do some air frying, I removed the pork from the fridge once again, 30 minutes prior to cooking to allow the meat to get back to room temperature. The skin was blotted one last time to ensure it is completely dry, and I removed some fat on the bottom to even out and level the meat. Don't let your hard work go to a waste, and make sure you turn the skin onto a napkin if you see any residual juices on the plate. Here, I have removed some fat and attempted to even out the bottom. Next thing you want to do is score the meat. A crackling skin is important, without a doubt. But flavorful, juicy meat below is just as essential. So don't focus on one and not the other. As you may see, my pork belly had some bones on them, so I did my best in scoring. Sprinkle 1 teaspoon of 5 spice powder all over the meat. Try to get them inside the cuts so your meat can be extra flavorful. Rub the spice onto the skin and do not forget the sides! Likewise, sprinkle one teaspoon of salt onto the meat and rub it all over with your hands. If you prefer more 5 spice powder or salt, feel free to add more. To keep the meat juicy, wrap it with aluminum foil, creating somewhat of a box to sit the pork belly in. Welcome to Aluminum Foil Craft 101 with Maggie from Rack of Lamb. Now pop it into your air fryer and cook at 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes or less if you are cooking with a smaller piece of pork belly. A 
I like to check on it after 15 minutes and turn to ensure heat is evenly distributed, but that is optional. As you can see, the skin is beginning to crackle after just 15 minutes. After 30 minutes, it looked amazing. I decided to cut it open because I was curious whether it was fully done since I have cooked smaller pieces that were complete after half an hour. Before we cut this, let's adore the physical beauty of crispy pork belly and enjoy the sounds of a cleaver against the crackling skin. You will notice a bed of liquid on the aluminum foil, which I discarded. Crackling skin? Check! Cooked meat? Hell to the no. Don't worry, pop this back into your air fryer for 3-5 to five minutes and results will be awesome. Similarly, I threw these pieces of pork belly back into the air fryer and cooked for another 3-5 to five minutes and they came out wonderful. Skin was still crackling and the meat was cooked and juicy. As with my tasu recipe, the moral of the story is, the air frying time and even temperature may vary depending on your air fryer and size and weight of your meat. For my cut, 390 degrees for 40 minutes got the job done, but be sure to adjust accordingly. Look at this. This was a huge success. With the help of an air fryer, you can effortlessly cook Dam Liu right at home. Now for some crispy pork belly ASMR. Plate the crispy pork belly and celebrate Chinese New Year with the best of the best. And to that, I will close the video with this. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I wish everyone a happy new year.